Hey, best, but uh, suffer. <laughs> oh, she is. That's, yeah, that's well, the I am, Trev. Thing. Thanks a lot. No, you guys were great. Congratulations, Trev. Well deserved, mate. I see yeah, you've got... I, I, see I you. played a great game myself. <laughs> <laughs> where, where were you actually sitting, Trev? Uh, we're here at the North Melbourne Social Club. The players have come back for a short time. Then they're off to the tennis centre for a big dinner. And I've got some of the players with me alongside me. First up, we have uh, Darren Crocker sporting the, uh, the stitches in the eye and getting a good reception back there too, Crox. And, uh, mate, uh, how'd you uh, get the stitches there on the shiner? Oh, mate, just a, a little bit of a uh, indiscretion in the second quarter there. So it just went off with the blood rule for uh, 10 or so minutes and then back into it. And you look very attractive when you came back with the tape wrapped around the head too, mate. Oh, yeah, good look, wasn't it? <laughs> now, uh, what about in the first quarter? Uh, the swans were running over the top of you and uh, you, the boys must have been a bit worried. Oh, yeah, look, yeah, we weren't playing well. We knew that they were going to drop a few blokes back um, and try and crowd up our forward line as much as possible. And I don't think we were playing smart footy at that stage. And then once we uh, started using the football a lot better, um, you know, the game just really, really broke open. Well, mate, congratulations. Next to Darren Crocker, we have the great man himself, Mickey Martin. Mate, sensational. Well, I think, Mickey, you would have had the most nervous week of just about anyone at the club. How was your week? knowing that you had to play on the big boy plugger. Uh, yeah, being in the grand final and playing on plugger makes it double uh, nervous and uh, the whole week is sort of like a bit edgy and that, but um, uh, it turned out really well. Mick says now, mate, uh, plugger, when did you think that the boys nervous. finally had it? Um, about the last second before the siren. All right, mate. And uh, next to Mickey Martin, we've got Glenn Freeborn. And uh, Glenn, absolutely sensational in the second quarter. Kicks Three, a good goal, Three goals in the second quarter, kept the, kept the boys in it. Very well done, mate. How'd you feel? Yeah, no, I was pretty wrapped with uh, my second quarter. And, um, yeah, no, I'm going to get all, get all fussy. You know, it was just good, you know, like we were starting to get on top of them in the second quarter. And it was what? a few bounces went my way. And it was good just to finish off and kick a few goals. <laughs> now, mate, uh, you're only a second year player, but you didn't look over right out there. Uh, I was pretty edgy before the game. A few visits to the toilet. Yeah, the, and next to Glenn Freeborn, we have the man himself, the Norm Smith medalist, Glenn Archer. <laughs> it's uh, or Newman, as he's known here at the club. Oh, it's, the, it's now the Newman Smith medal, Daryl, apparently. <laughs> now, Glenn, absolute thrill must be not only to win the flag, but best on ground as well. Yeah, something you don't think of, you know, you go out there to win the grand final and to, uh, to win the Norm Smith as well, it's just a tremendous bonus. Trevor? Uh, yes, Daryl. Can I just ask, Glenn, when, uh, when the, you're lining up for the National Anthem, you, I noticed you were all staring directly at the, at the Swans players. Was that a psychological tactic you were told to do, or was it just um, that you have to be facing each other and you thought we'll stare each other out? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, every, final I've, every final I've played in, I, uh, I usually pick out the player that I'm playing on and try and stare him out a little bit. And how did you go in that, uh, in that sense? Did he stare you out or did you stare him out? Sorry, I couldn't did hear you. We, there, did you stare him out or did he stare you out? Uh, who's that? My man. Your opponent. Uh, hopefully I yeah. stared him out. And could you stare that bloke out behind you? <laughs> <laughs> Over your shoulder, not the other shoulder, Trent. As we can see, there's a bit of revelry here. There's a few, a few more of the boys over here. We've got uh, Freddie Allison, Fruity, absolute star. And then had a great final series, of, including Dale, of course. You remember seven goals against Geelong. Great thrill, mate. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's a dream come true, and, uh, you know, we're just going to enjoy it tonight. It was great today. Well, uh, Brett's, of course, originally from Canberra. It's a long way from... Uh, from the Canberra to uh, the podium at the MCG, in it, mate? Yeah, it's a hell of a long way, and it's been 10 years to do, and, uh, you know, it's finally, it's finally happened to arrive today. Well, mate, congratulations. And uh, I know the boys are going to enjoy themselves tonight, Darryl, although they're so focused on the 1997 season that they're actually not drinking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, of course. They would never think of it. I just want to celebrate. Um, but can you ask, what is that guy's name behind you, uh, Chris? Oh, he's gone He's now. gone now. <laughs> He's probably standing behind the curtain. There was a guy with his head in shot the entire interview. There. But he's, he's disappeared. However, our congratulations to all the guys there. They're obviously going to rage on. You're going to rage on with them, no doubt. Um, so we, we might see you in a couple of days' time then, yeah? Yes, Daryl. My only regret is there's, there's no footy show next week, so I can stick it up, everyone. Well, well maybe, uh, maybe you'll get a chance to write the panto. Oh, there's that man. 